Welcome back to the Tokyo Metropolitan Gymnasium. It's quarterfinals day here at the Total Energies BWF World Badminton Championships. Well, we've had eight matches already here on court number one. Two courts in action, as you can see. So ten matches on each of the two courts. That's what's happened so far. And our two matches to come after that wonderful women's singles demonstration by Tai Su Ying. We turn our attention to mixed doubles, and it's the number 11 seed Go Soon Huat and Shivon Jamie Lai of Malaysia. Up against the Olympic bronze medalists and the two-time world championship medalists, the number three seeds Yuta Watanabe and Orisa Higashino. Well, as far as the mixed doubles draw is concerned, on the adjoining court, it's just been a thrilling match with the European champions, Mark Lamsfus and Isabel Lohau, the number nine seeds. Uh, they've come through against the two-time bronze medalists, the two left-handers, Tang Chung Man and Si Yun Suet, in three thrilling games. That's the only quarter-final of the mixed doubles that's been played so far. So the European champions backing up their wonderful third-round victory over the defending champions, Puavara Nukro and Tengrat Tanachai, by now reaching the semi-final stage. So... The match-up that the home fans have been looking forward to in the mixed doubles discipline. Yuta Watanabe and Arisa Higashino up against Kosun Kwats and Shivon Jamie Lai. Yes, the Japanese flags are being waved. And the left and right-handed combinations, both of them, coming on to court for this quarter-final. Well, I can tell you this will be a third meeting between these two pairs, and the previous two have both been won by the Japanese combination, Watanabe and Higashino, and both of their previous encounters have been won in two straight games. The last time they met was the quarter-final of the Thailand Super 500 event earlier this year. Two straight games, 21-18, 21-17 in just 31 minutes. Black side, right for you. It's black side. Go to serve. Go so, to the Malaysians have won the toss of the coin and have chosen to serve, which means that the Japanese pair will choose which end they wish to start. And I think they're quite happy with the far end of the court. Stéphane Vanet, but Vanet of France is our umpire for this one. So, I should think the Japanese pair are pretty confident coming into this, but of course the, all the pressure is on them. The fact that they're playing at home and the home fans expect them to deliver. Go Sun Huat is 32 years of age now, uh, born in Malacca, and he and his partner have been as high as number six on the world rankings. Total of nine weeks across two different spells. And this is their third World Championships as a pair and a second consecutive quarter-final because they were quarter-finalists in Welva, where they lost out to the eventual gold medalists, Puavaranukro and Teirat Hanajai. Siobhan Jamie Light turned 29 earlier this month from Salanga, and uh, they were in the final of the Swiss Open earlier this year. They played a lot of tournaments, uh, 12 tournaments so far. And looking at their matches to get through to this quarter-final stage, a bye in the first round. And then England's uh, Greg Mez and Jenny Moore. And then the European silver medalists, uh, Jikel and Del Rue. Two straight games, as you saw in both of those matches. So to the Japanese pair and the left-handed Yuta Watanabe is 25 years of age from Suginami, part of this the greater Tokyo region. And they're playing off their career high of number three at the moment. It's their 79th week in total in their third different spell at number three. Arisa Higashino is the older of the two at 26, born in Sorachi. 
Ready to play. And this is their fifth World Championships. Medals in the last two. A bronze in Basel in 2019, and then that silver medal at the last World Championships. Two finals so far this year from their seven tournaments, and by virtue of their seeded position, they had a bye in the first round, then Dunn and Torrance from Scotland, and then the number 15 seeds, Tarbelin and Peak of the Netherlands. So uh, both these pairs coming into this match uh, not having dropped a game in the tournament so far. So our court officials from France and Hong Kong, Stefan Vernet and Simon Au, Man Feng from Hong Kong, China. So final last preparations before the match gets underway. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Alisa Higashino and Yuta Watanabe, Japan. and go soon what Malaysia <laughs> go soon what to serve to Arisa Higashino Lovo so it is the Malaysian pair, the number 11 seeds, Gonsun Kwat and Siobhan Jamie Lai getting this quarterfinal underway against the two-time world championship medalists Watanabe and Higashino. That's a lovely start from Shibuya Jamie Lai. Now, I, in the introductions there, I was talking about an English pair that this Malaysian pair beat in the second round. Greg, uh, wonderful of you to come back and join me again. Uh, obviously, you and Jenny played against the Malaysians in the second round. 21-13, uh, 21-18, very close second game. So you know their style very well. What can we expect from the Malaysian pair? What are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? Yes, hello. Um, and hello to everyone around the world and joining us in what I'm sure is going to be a very exciting match. Uh, what are their strengths? So Gosun Huat is a very strong, athletic man. And he's very good in smashes and drives. And Jamie Chevron is very good at intercepting around the court. So as we can see already, I think it's going to be a battle for the attack here. And who can get on the attack and use their strengths to their advantage? Yep. I think you're absolutely right. And I think that part of that battle will be the two women at the front of the court. I think that's absolutely vital in mixed doubles when uh, you're on-court partner and off-court partner. Jenny Moore was with us the other day. She was talking about, you know, how the woman's role in mixed doubles at the front of the court is to not only finish it off, uh, but also to try and set it up for the man to play the big smash, to then get the opportunity to finish it off from the front of the court. Yeah, definitely. It makes the man's job a lot easier when the woman is, is setting up the attack. So moving to the front of the court really early to play the shuttle in a downwards direction. And a good start from the Malaysians. It's a very good start, isn't it? Oh, that's a great smash. Good defence too from... Higashino. Uh, well, she may have made the mistake, but I think she was right to go for it. Yeah, definitely. There's no good being passive at the front of the court. No, it was interesting that the Japanese pair were open out the rally quite a lot at the start of that match. Three or four lifts in a row to go. I don't think they're going to win the match just by this one. No. 
Well, I was, I was watching their match against Tarbelin and Pink from the Netherlands. And I have to say, I, I was very surprised that at the start of the second game, Watanabe and Higashino seemed content to lift. Yeah. But because I see them as an attacking play, pair. Why yeah, would definitely. they do that? What, what would be the theory behind that? I don't know. I don't know whether it's just because it's the start of the game, they're just getting a feel for the court and maybe getting rid of some nerves by trying to have a few long rallies. That's a great interception from Lai. Yeah. But after, after playing those Malaysians just two days ago, I definitely wouldn't, wouldn't want to be lifting them around the back too much. They've got to get on the attack. And then they are very good on the attack, the Japanese pairing. Yeah. Oh, lucky net ball from Wilson Pratt. Six, three. talking about the fact that they've played 12 tournaments already this year, the Malaysians. And given uh, the calendar, badminton calendar has been disrupted by the global pandemic, that's an awful lot of tournaments, isn't it? Yeah, they've played everyone. They've played everyone. And I think maybe on the back of, you know, the time we've had out for the pandemic, it might be a good thing because, they, you know, the more tournaments you play, the more you get used to playing competitive matches and even if you lose sometimes you know you can learn from that and use that in your next rounds do you know i was watching lisi Zha of malaysia the number five seed in his third round men's singles match and i was talking about precisely that Nine, about four. the fact that he may be physically fit again after his injury problems but match fitness and that's exactly what you're alluding to with the Malaysians. They've played lots of tournaments, they're match fit. They're not only physically fit, they're used to these pressure situations, used to the pace of play, because they've played so much. Yeah, so much in badminton is how you can deal with those situations. Yeah, that's a big smash from Watanabe. has got his left ankle heavily strapped. It was strapped yesterday as well when I was watching him play. But I didn't particularly notice any discomfort in movement. Yeah, take a new shuttle. Seven, ten. She's probably one of the most athletic players in the mixed doubles discipline. Higashino, do you think? Yes, I just love watching her jump smashes. We've already saw, saw one at the start of this match. And this time the jump smash from her partner. But also, I think what's really interesting... Have you, have you played against the hey. Japanese no. pet? You haven't hey. played against them. You watch her movement off the shuttle. The way she adjusts her positioning at the front of the court, it's, it moves back a little bit as, as the shuttle is lifted to her partner at the back, always adjusting the movement, which, of course, is what you should do, but I think it's she does it particularly well. Yeah, and it really helps her partner, Watanabe, to know what shots he's going to get, and then he can use his incredible speed. It's a good rally. Goodness me. Good punch clear. Oh, it's just long. It was a nice idea. Uh, just long of the back line. And it means that the Malaysians have a three-point advantage here at the mid-game interval of the opening game. Just seven minutes played.
Former world number one. Oh my goodness! Yeah, I have to walk straight into the camera. Poor lady. Former world number one, Chinny Lee. Women's doubles, giving me tactical advice. Well, Malaysians are hoping to make a little bit of extra history today, as far as Malaysian mixed doubles is concerned, because Malaysian pairs have only ever won one medal in the mixed doubles discipline at the World Championships. You have to go back to Madrid in 2006. 16 years ago. Nine, eleven. Ku Kiat and Wong Pei Ti won the bronze medal in Madrid, losing the semi-final to Anthony Clark and Donna Kellogg from England, who then lost in the final. Great defence. Wow. They've suddenly got on the attack, Greg. They have, they have. I think it was just ten, before eleven. the 11 interval, actually, because the Malaysians were, was it 10-5 up, I think it was? 10-4. 10-4, so getting back to 11-8 is, is quite good for the Japanese. Yeah. Only a three-point deficit. And now, now it's 10-11, and they're getting into their style. Yeah, six of the last seven points. Oh, lovely court, net court for Watanabe. So what do you do, Greg, if, if a pair suddenly starts attacking you? How do you neutralise that? Yeah, I was just about to say, go online, need to really remember their game plan and stick to the way they came out in this match because they've gone a little bit defensive now. So when, when a pair is starting to attack you, it sounds very obvious, but you need to almost try and find a way to not lift. And often that comes from the first few shots in the rally. Service over. So the return of serve becomes well, vital. Definitely, 11. yes. It's so important. We've already seen, I'd say, 40% of the points so far that have been won or lost in the first three or four shots. Yeah. It does tend to set the tone of the whole rally, doesn't it? The first yeah. three shots. Oh, that's brilliant. Defense. Brilliant. So, I mean, obviously, it was brilliant defence from Watanabe, but should Go have have played a different shot there? Yeah. Should he vary his attack more? Yes, definitely. When you're off balance, if you go... If you hit a hard shot, it's very difficult. It's very difficult to recover if your opponents get it back. And there, he wasn't in a good enough position to hit a winning shot. So like a drop there, just to get, try and get a short lift. Yeah, and, and like the fast drop. Oh, wow. That proves your point. Yeah. Because as soon as he tried to hit hard with the smash, it was severely punished by Watanabe. Yeah, and again, he wasn't in a good position doing that. You could see there, he was leaning back a little bit. He wasn't moving forwards into the shot. And now they're 13-12 down. And I feel now they're trying to force the return of serve a little bit. Just before the break, we saw them make two easy mistakes off, off the return of serve. And this is divine for the attack that we're talking about. But there has to be a balance. They can't go in all in too much because then the mistakes come. Well, 10 of the last 12 points to the two-time medalist. Turn it over. Yeah, yes. Better play. 13, 14. That's what the Malaysians are going to want. They're going to want to set up Lai's forehand. Oh, it was a nice idea from Watanabe. I like the idea of the drop to the centre of the court. 
try and make both of the Malaysians step forward to try and retrieve it. Because then they're going to be out of position for the next shot. It's, it's, not, it's not just about looking at shots in isolation, is it? it? Mixed doubles, I think, is the most tactically complex of any badminton discipline. And I think it's about thinking ahead. For sure, yeah. Like we were saying before, and when you're at the back of the court, you want to drop 40. it to set up for the next shot. And if that next shot's a really good lift, you might want to do the same again. Yeah. Just a wait. It's very tactical. Hey! Service over. 15 oh. There's the drop. Wow, my goodness me, that's not supposed to happen. A winning smash from the back of the court. There's the jump smash that you were talking about earlier. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that wonderful to look at? On court. It's great athleticism, but it's also the timing of the shot. It's so hard to jump and also play a good smash at the same time. Great to watch. Set up by the Japanese pair. Get it long. Service over. 16, 17. Have we seen a flick serve yet, Greg? I don't think we have. Are you expecting one now, are you? I am. <laughs> no, it's a brilliant low serve. Wow, oh, look at that smash. That is superb. Oh. And back level. That could have been worth a challenge. It did look good. What do you like on your challenges? How often are you, are you right when you watch it? I'd Are you good? I'd say I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> You've got a lot more experience than me, then. <laughs> yeah, that's well done. There's no question of that one. That one was wide. Yeah, pushing the return of serve to the forehand of Watanabe. That's a dangerous thing to do. 19, 17. Two point advantage and two points away from this opening game. Oh, look at that defense. One point away from this opening game. When you consider that they were 4 10 down, 20 this is extraordinary. game point 17. They're certainly flowing now, yeah, in attack, serving well, which is helping. Pushes long, opening game 21 17 in favor of the home favorites. Muta Watanabe and Arisa Higashino. 17 minutes for the opening game and 21-17 coming from six-point deficit of 4-10. But it's not how you start, it's how you finish.
It was an excellent opening game with Yuta Watanabe and Orisa Higashino coming from 4-10 down. Going to be one ten of the next 12 points. Closing out that opening game 21-17. So Go Soon Huatz and Siobhan Jamie Lai. Well, we know, Greg, that they need to try and get on the attack. And to do that, you've talked about the first a few shots of the rally. I think they need to try and do something a little bit more on the return of serve. Yeah, but they're serving so well, the Japanese. I'm watching every serve, and it's literally skimming the net. So but, they, but they haven't flicked yet. They, they haven't flicked. And, and I'm sort of thinking... No, that's Service just short, over. that's the first... I've jinxed them there. <laughs> so a bit Sarah. Yeah, the curse of the commentator. But I think on the return of serve, uh, you know, there's little pushes to the mid-court area, which are very good shots. We talk about it a lot in mixed doubles, but how often have they played anything into the, the back deep corners on the return of serve? I haven't seen one, I don't think. I think that's because they've not been early, early enough on them. Okay. And, and when you know that you know your opponents are never fit serving, you can stand further forward, you can be more aggressive. Exactly. Like, can you can you show where to wipe? There's the the, the special oh, stop drop from Yuta Watanabe. It's incredible to watch. Yeah, it's, it is an incredible shot, I agree with you. And I think it, he'll use it more this side because the, the air con is blowing towards us, so it'll just almost hold up the drop. It will go further away from the Malaysians trying to defend it. Are you sure about that drift? I think so. Because on it's a bit different. Yeah, I think it, it's been flying faster going towards the far end of the court earlier in the week on court number one. It may well have been doing, but so far in this match, it looks like that. I mean, you, every court's different. Do you know, Steen and I discussed that yesterday because I thought the drift had maybe changed. Because, But I think the reality is there's very little difference in, in the two ends now. I think there's more sideways drift. Yeah. The Malaysians need to do something because this is. You can just see they're hitting it a little bit harder, I think, and it is, it's not going out. I don't think. The Malaysians definitely didn't lift one out of the back the whole of the first set, which might be why they were on the defence so much. Oh. Two, seven. Now the Malaysians really have to use this 
now and try and build on this if they want to become the second little medalists from their country in the mixed doubles. Of course they want to do that. Clash of rackets. That's the sort of shot that I'd like to see more of. It's a good rally. Good interception. Uh, that's a pity from a Malaysian perspective. They were doing exactly as you had been suggesting, looking to get on the attack. They'd varied their downward shots. Quickly. Yeah, we want to see no, more no, rallies go, like that. Go. Quick tower on me. Quick tower. On court. Forty-three shots. Surely the longest so far, isn't it? I think we can forgive her one series, one or two series errors when she's serving so right. tight the rest of the time. No, you can see that every time Yuta Watanabe is hitting Nine. from the back, if it's Three. a really good lift, he's just playing a drop, playing a drop and be patient. There's a bit more pace on it. And then he's in. Both these, these men are so fast. Yeah. Both actually came into mix from being singles players. Yeah, indeed. Those two players, there should be more singles. But Yuta Watanabe also... I was doing a bit of research before this, and they both played their last singles match in 2016. Yuta Watanabe was in the last 64 of the World Junior Championships. And then he played mixed. Kirsten Fuat's last singles match was also in 2016. Yeah. Service over. Four. Because there's lots of, lots of skills that come from singles that you can apply to mixed doubles. Yeah. And interestingly, they both went into playing with the combinations that they're in now. Right. So they've both been playing, both of these pairs have been playing together for six years and not had any other partners. So they should be used to playing with each other, that's for sure. Absolutely. Oh, well, what an Abe and Higashino play together as juniors. Oh. And when Morton Frost suggested that Gosun cracks after his illness troubles, a switch to mixed doubles, as you say, partly with Siobhan, Jamie and I. Well, uh, this is uh, almost sort of a, a mirror image of the opening game, isn't it? 11-4 in favour of Watanabe and Higashino, and then 10-4 down in the opening game. Well, the Malaysians have got to try something different. Yeah. Because the other Malaysian Nine. pair in the quarterfinal Nine. stage, Tang Kiang Meng and Lai, Lai Pei Jing, when I say have pay, lost to the two time okay. former champions, Chang Shi Wei and Wang Yaxiong, very yeah. comfortably. So it's Malaysia's last hope in the mixed doubles discipline, this pair. Oh, 
nice drop. Amazing. Brilliant. They're not winning the long rallies, are they going live? No. It's very good rallies, but the Japanese have just got a little bit too much for them. I just love watching them play when they're in this flow, moving yeah. around each other so fast. by the Malaysians. Yeah. Five, twelve. They can match the level, they can nearly match their speed. What they need to do is match their consistency as well. Yeah. And I think that's where they fell short in the first game, and so far that's where they're, they're falling short in this <laughs> second game. Well, the Japanese are playing well. They've played well all tournament so far. They don't give you any cheap points. I don't know. Apart from maybe one or two service mistakes, have they made many mistakes in, in the open rallies that you would say are really unforced? No, not really. <laughs> but what's impressive about it is not just the consistency, it's consistency at a high tempo and <laughs> high <laughs> level of shot quality. Yeah. Six, twelve. As we said at the start, the mixed doubles is so tactical, so you need to always be thinking about the shots you're playing. You can't play the wrong shot, especially at this level, because you do get punished. Yeah. Yeah. A little run of points. Yeah, we'll give them a bit of confidence. Still waiting to see a return into one of the deep back boxes. Oh, you know, didn't go to the back box, but instead of trying to play half court, and that was a much deeper push. Got the desired result. Yeah, it's not just with the shot, you could see his body, he'd committed fully. And that puts even more pressure onto the opponents. Oh, First service error from goal. 15, 8. Ah, that's a quality shot. talking about Watanabe and Higashino and their movement, you talked about them flowing. And I think that's one of the things that mixed doubles has changed completely since my playing day, but most things have changed since my playing day <laughs> because I'm, I'm so old. But, you know, I think the fact oh! that it's almost at times rotational play rather than, you know, what is 
deemed the traditional way where the, the female player just stays at the front of the court because she's more agile and she can twist and turn a little better than the men and the men are physically stronger so you want them hitting from the back i think that that flowing play that you've been talking about but even the malaysians are doing it now yeah. in this rally it, it's all it's almost a requirement of mixed doubles now it is a requirement good play yeah, the men are also so good at the net, at intercepting, and the women like Higashino can jump smash yeah. and hit powerful smashes. So they're, they're happy being at the back. And yeah. It's often an effective formation. Yeah, the, f the now former world champions, Puavara Nukro and Teirat Tanachai. Teirat Tanachai, having been a former women's singles player, and she's in the semi final of the women's doubles here. Yes, I watched that match. Yeah, she's, I mean, she's more than happy and, and capable at the back of the court, and therefore there is this uh, formation where the men can, can rush the net. And, and really try and dominate from that area. Now, what's the problem here? With the seems that doctor's been called. Oh, he needs a bit of spray on his back. But it is lovely now to see mixed doubles played like this with that rotational play. You have to probably, you tell me, be more thoughtful when you're on court playing like a pair like either of these pairs as you did earlier in the tournament uh, because if the man's suddenly coming forward and you think i'm going to block believing that the female player is going to be there and suddenly it's the man you've got to be even more aware tactically yeah yeah 10 definitely. 16 especially Light. what Scroll can you do if, yeah. if the woman is at the back you can keep lifting and as we said they've got they've got great attacks yeah so you almost have to wait until the man tries to move back and rotate to then block it. But when we're watching this like, like we are, it's easy. It's easy to see. Yeah. But when you're playing, it's not. <laughs> no, I know. The number of times that Steen and I sit here and, and say, they should be doing this or they should be doing that. And, you know, it's so easy when you sit off yeah. court. It, in, in the heat of the battle, it's so much more difficult to think clearly. And, and actually do the right things and to see what's happening. Yeah, and I'm, I'm sure when the Malaysians, you know, is looking like the Japanese are going to be victorious in this match, and I'm sure when the Malaysians watch this match back, they'll be frustrated because at times... Flick serve. Yes. That's one more point. Yes, as I was saying, because at times... They'll, they'll see, oh, there was actually a space there. I didn't need to lift. Yes. Or I could have done this return. Why didn't why didn't I return hard into the into mm. the back? Like you're saying, Jill. But you forget all these things. Yeah. And some things become instinctive, which is why practice and training become so important. That you uh, practice uh, doing the right things and being able to have the the variation. That's absolutely brilliant from Higa Shino. One little Look block. Look how fast, fast she is in there yeah. after she's played the block. She's seen that they're going to take it below the height of the net and she's in. Everything else on the court is a partner's. No, she missed so that over. one, but the intent is there. Yeah. And that's why they're, they're looking like they're going to win this match. I mean, I'm not going to write it off, that's for sure. <laughs> no, after we've everything seen we've seen. We've seen some comebacks today. <laughs> we have, haven't we? Have you been down here all day watching? I must have had a training session at some point today, haven't you? Yeah, this morning. And then, now we're going to watch it. Uh, I like that variation on the low serve. Drive defence. Nice drop. 
there was a double hit by the Malaysians. But the pace of the runner. Yeah, that was a very good rally. 19-13. Yeah, well spotted by the umpire. Two points away. Watanabe and Higashino from a third consecutive medal at World Championships. Oh, that's clever. That was a bit of a reverse slice on that from Watanabe. Yeah, they've been very good here, very good. The Malaysians haven't been able to cope, unfortunately, so far. Well, the time, I suspect, is more than somewhat running out. Because it's seven match point opportunities for Watanabe and Higashino. Turn of serve, and indeed Yuta Watanabe and Arusa Higashino through to the semi-final and a guaranteed medal. But it is the gold medal that they so desire. They have a bronze, they have a silver. There's one missing from their set, and that is their quest. Well, smiles from Watanabe and Higashino as they close out the match. 21-17, 21-13 in a match lasting 40 minutes. Greg, they really were superb. It was a bit of a sluggish start, but after that slow start, I mean, they were just brilliant. Yeah, I don't know if that was nerves playing in front of the home crowd, but you couldn't see many nerves after that. No. They played very, very well. From 4-10 down in that first game. They looked winners all the way, in yeah. all honesty. And I love the way they both look like they're enjoying it all the time. Yeah. It's very nice to see, especially Arisa. Yes, Arisa Higashino has always smiles, but yeah, big smiles from both of them. And why not? So they take leave of centre stage, confirmation of the scoreline once again, 21-17, 21-13 in 40 minutes. And we look forward to our next match, which is a women's singles, and it's the defending champion, Akane Yamaguchi of Japan, up against the three-time former champion, Carolina Marin of Spain.